Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up the original version of the booby nymph. Here's a fly pattern that was developed in England like all the booby nymphs were. This was by a fellow by the name of Gordon Fraser I found out later but I remember when the internet just came out I had a fellow from England email me a picture of this fly exact same fly here and told me a story about it and looked pretty goofy and uh, and he also indicated that it was illegal to use over there at that time so I just wrote it off as a hoax until several years later I had Dale Freshy and uh, Paul Mariner came and fished with me on the lakes and Paul Mariner grabbed some of these and started out fishing with what we were using and I knew it was the real deal and it's what can I say about the booby nymph? It's just that created its own following and its own cult with all kinds of shapes and forms and keeps evolving. But this is the original tie. We're going to go over the materials with you. I'm going to use some orange marabou for the tail. We're going to use some gold tinsel for the ribbing. For the body I'm going to use some uh, seal. This is an orange. You can change the colors up. The original was tied in orange and uh, the beads, the head was made with the styrofoam beads and uh, the, the netting I'm using some of the spawn sack. This is actually, uh, you find that in your tackle shops. A lot of these guys are using that for your, your different colors of it and different beads and so forth. You can trick them out however you want. It also comes with different color of the netting, this little nylon uh, netting. So that's the original and I got to using it. It was kind of my little ace in the hole for years when I was guiding lakes. I never never pull it out but if I was having a tough day and couldn't get guys in to fish or I was struggling. I would fish this fly in the bottom of the lake with a full sink line and about a four to five foot leader. Because this fly floats, I can see why it works. And, uh, and this, when the fish uh, rise on the, or when it's uh, stripped down on the bottom and then you let it float naturally uh, to the top, that's when the fish, these, these pody little, these pody fish at the bottom will, will grab a hold of that at that time and when the insects float up to emerge and when you would run that past their nose, they're going to eat it. So what I'm doing is taking a couple of my foam beads and the, the, the net, that ending here, we're just going to envelope it here, just kind of loose, and then tie it on the front. And that's all that the eyes were, and they still to this day, that is a great, great way to do this fly. I know there's lots of different materials out there. I leave it a little bit loose because when I come in here to uh, figure eight at the head, that tightens that netting up even a little more. And that is very, very buoyant right there. That, that really floats well. And that buoyancy is what's the deal here. So I'm going to take a nice soft plume of marabou here. It calls for a full mar marabou tail. I've seen this published in a book of Mike Dawes from England. He's, he's got, there's, I got two editions of those books that he put out and, and, uh, there's some really good flies in there, these English flies. English, they forgot a lot about more about fly fishing than some of us know. Them guys are very, very good. And I still go back and use some of them old English patterns. Wet flies and that are really good. So when I tie in a marabou like that, there's going to be a little, little uh, tip in here. I'll show you. Just pull that tip out. It doesn't swim. It's not that good. Okay, just pull that out. Then I'm going to come in with my gold tinsel for the rib. Throw a half hitch on. You can folks want to do a dubbing loop at this time. I'm just going to use my rotary vise here to dub this body. And what can I say about seal fur? There's just nothing that will ever duplicate seal fur. Fish love to eat seal. And a fairly thick body on here. Now this is a size 8. I'd also fish a size 10. 
and then I'm just going to segment the body with the gold and tie it off behind the eyes. Cut that off there and I'm using an orange thread to match. Six watt thread. And there it is, that's the original Booby Nymph. And I'll tell you folks, this will work as good as any of the new ones. And there is so many new styles and materials out there now. There's Fritz materials and all kinds of things coming out of England. We use that. We strip in those flies quite fast. And uh, you've seen that used in, on the show many times. And uh, this is one. You can fish it on top too. I've seen Mariner fish it really on top more as a dry fly. I was fishing on the bottom with full sink and then let it let it rise up naturally. Once you quit pulling on it, if you got some nice light tippet, it'll it'll rise like an emerger and it'll it'll really encourage a stubborn trout to to bite. So folks here it is, the original booby nymph. Thanks to Gordon Fraser out of England. I don't think he realized what kind of a fly he came up with when he designed this one, but it's got quite a following. All the best. Hope to see you in the water. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.